Hi everyone, welcome. Today we're checking in on my so-called original red wiggler worms. They live in these two tubs here, and they've lived here for the past 194 days. Fed 16 times so far, and that last feeding, the 16th feeding, came 12 days ago. And the other thing that we've been doing in these systems, which is a little different from what I do in most systems, was the application of water. And it's because... I guess the main reason I would track back to a point in time, perhaps three or maybe even four, who knows, maybe even longer at this point, four, five, I would say probably four feedings ago, four or five feedings ago, I started examining these outer edges of the bins, which is about as far as away as you can get from where I feed, which is down the middle, and I found very few worms out there, and I didn't think it was because, hey, I'm feeding down the middle, I'm drawing all the worms into there. In most cases, the worms in your system are kind of spread out, you know, either hanging out near where you fed um, or perhaps after they've had their fill, just going out for a little cruise to search around and do other things, you know. So uh, for me, it's sometimes a measure of perhaps the system becoming a little bit inhospitable to worms being there. I don't see worms there. Seems kind of obvious. Oh, okay, I think we've just bumped into one of our first um, leftovers from the last feeding. I took some of these cardboard tubes that you get paper towels or toilet paper on and I cut them into these little short pieces and and then I folded the bottom and stuffed the bottom with some paper so that it would be a little bit capable of holding on to this blended kind of smoothie mix that I created out of a whole bunch of rotting peppers that I had. And it, um, I do remember now that a couple of the peppers I ended up grinding up didn't even seem that bad. But a good many of them just kind of um, ended up in a section of the refrigerator where it was too cold and started freezing and you can't really enjoy a fresh pepper anymore after it has been frozen and thawed because it just turns to mush. <laughs> Doesn't have that nice crispy um, texture to it anymore. I guess just that freezing and thawing process just wreaks havoc on the structure of that particular type of material and makes it uh, just makes it almost liquefy. Amazing how much power the act of freezing and thawing has. Well, the few things that we bumped into were one of these little shot glasses. I thought we'd see more of this sort of stuff, but perhaps it was just pure luck that was encountered right there in the very beginning. piece of a mango seed husk and a big old stem of a pumpkin. Chances are we're going to find similar leftovers over here in bin number two. This is a piece of mango husk, I believe, mango seed husk. And I guess along with the little shot glasses, the cardboard tube shot glasses, this to me looks like the way I folded it over and went around to try to make the bottom capable of holding on to the smoothie, the pepper smoothie I threw in there. And, well, that one has survived also. And now we're just sort of getting right to the point where we thought we would be, right? <laughs> one piece of uh, mango seed husk, one pumpkin stem and one not yet broken down cardboard left over. At this point it's no longer what it was intended to be in the beginning, it's just more bedding for the wormies. And just like all bedding, it'll gradually transform into stuff for them to consume. And I figured, you know, maybe it had something to do with the fact that I had poured all that um, lovely pepper juice all over these things. Maybe that stuff actually had a chance to sort of soak in to some of the cardboard and, you know, turn sort of turn the, t the cardboard into uh, more of a food item at that point, I would think. Soaked with the juices of yummy vegetable matter. So we're kind of where we want to be. At this point, I believe, we've got a um, nice little trench 
excavated. Oh boy. In each system where we can plop today's feeding. And you can see I just replenished my supply of prepared bedding. <laughs> Shredded paper, cardboard mix layered in with um, tiny leaf fragments. And this is going to be what we use as our bedding today. So let's, let's drop some in. I've been really generous with the bedding over the past few check-ins ever since I took the time to prepare about 10 gallons of shredded paper and cardboard of which there's still a little bit left. I still got about a half a bucket remaining, a couple gallons worth. And I, uh, I always seem to be a lot more generous when I don't feel like I've <laughs> um, got an impending shortage of material on hand. So I, um, I guess, you know, I looked around my wormery and it did seem to me like, of all my systems, these are a couple of the very few, if not the only, systems where we've got um, paper top coverings versus plastic top coverings. And I guess for that reason, unless we decide to go with plastic top coverings, I mean, I, I've just been in the habit of dampening the material in these systems over the past few check-ins, trying to counteract what could end up become becoming a, an overly dry environment. And for that matter, when I would go to the outer edges of these systems, I would also dampen the material out there too. And then, um, and then just resume ongoing activity in these systems using paper only coverings. But even last time, I mean, they're still here. They're right, <laughs> I mean, I could just pretty much reach down under the bench and pull out one of the two bubble wrap plastics that I had laid out here to be in easy reach for, um, putting into these systems last time and I came about this close to upgrading their top coverings from paper only to include plastic and I mean there's certainly nothing preventing us from doing it at some point soon who knows maybe today but I think you know I guess the rationale I used last time was that let's try to just change one thing at a time to see how that thing that we're doing is actually working and to what degree and how well. So rather than putting in water, spraying it down, and then also covering with plastic, I figured let's just do the, let's just stick to what we've been doing over the past few check-ins, which has just been the, uh, the dampening of the material and allowing for the much more breathable paper top coverings to persist and um, at this point I'm starting to feel like I, I have no objection to possibly you know updating their top coverings to include plastic now and also add water like we already just did into the feeding zone I mean uh, it is sort of becoming um, much drier the air you can tell you know as we're sort of changing seasons the the very humid summer days are definitely in the rearview mirror at this point. And it is very nice to see how these outer edges of the, the bin, at least over here so far in bin number two, are um, totally, wow, okay. <laughs> um, totally occupied with wormies. In fact, little bundles of them too. And, you know, I'll tell you my assessment of what's going on here. This could possibly be an indication that the worms are sensing a um, an insufficient amount of moisture in, their, in the space that they're occupying, kind of huddling together to try to um, preserve their moisture content. And when I see worms kind of exhibiting that sort of defensive or um, I guess protective or there's got to be a good word for it. It'll probably come to me any second now. But they're basically um, hunkering down, you know, trying to guard from what I guess they're perceiving to be perhaps a little bit too dry material. 
and I'm trying to protect against drying out. So I do feel like now that I'm observing that sort of stuff, I mean, it's admittedly not too bad. There's little clusters of worms hanging out. I think we hit two of them over here in bin number one. I guess let's see how the worms are feeling over on this edge of bin number two. Here two little bundles of worms, to me, seemingly either huddling together to protect themselves or perhaps not, but also, I mean, but instead just congregating in a portion of the system that seems to be on its own maintaining its moisture level better, which is just sections of the bin that are a little bit down low and out of reach of the top surface, which has just been um, left to get a little bit dry with only paper top covering. So I, um, I definitely get this feeling like I'm slowly talking myself into <laughs> applying bubble wrap top coverings, you know, because in past check-ins, while I had the outer edges open, I would actually come in with the spray wand and dampen all that material as I backfilled it. This time, something told me in the back of my mind that I think I'd already made up my mind. <laughs> and I think what we're going to do is deploy plastic coverings, finally, <laughs> after, after sort of teasing at the idea for a number of check-ins. I do believe it is time to give these little guys just a little bit more protection so that the moisture content of the system can just remain without being lost to evaporation. And, uh, and then I think that'll just extend their ability to roam in and out of their space rather than feeling like they've got to um, dive down deep to where the material is still more moist. The moisture level throughout the system I think will equalize a little bit and make it a lot more hospitable for worms to be in. Other than that, I think everything looks good, and I think even though it wasn't a very big feeding, we were nice and generous with the bedding, and we were even kind enough to dampen it for them. So I think they'll be happy in this feeding zone for a little while. Um, hopefully they will be, at least. <laughs> and then we'll give them another, you know, maybe a couple weeks to um, work on that. It's only six days from their 200th day in service, so we won't be here for that, so in advance. Happy 200 days in service. All right, everyone, that's it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.